Hey, welcome to the Fake Philosophers. Hey, Mike, how's it going? Hold on. Is that an issue? Bit of a technical issue. Mike is joining us all the way from California. California West Coast is, you know, that joke is never going to get old. It's never going to get old. Never. I'm from North Carolina, by the way. Hold on. The board Um, is like picking up. Whenever I touch the table, it's like vibrating. So, uh, Mike, we just skipped right over the the clap there. Should I just go ahead and do it? Or I mean, this is gold. This is going in the episode. You know what? They should see. What What is our lead up to an episode? Sure. Um, this will be our, our bit of a behind the scenes episode. Just a, a little bit. bit. A little bit. Let me turn. Uh, Jesus how, Christ. How we, how we sounded? We are we all right over there? No, we're sounding good. Just like I'm putting my beer down and uh, like... On this table, because I'm not doing it at the white table, like, I put the beer down and the, the board picks it up. Is the white table better? Yes and no. It's just is not the, set up. Is the white table, like, just, so it's better than, like, just the overall tables. <laughs> That's weird, man. Sure. That's, I see you really making an effort trying to make that all the other tables feel included as well. All right. Um, Getting off to a right start. A great All start. Right. We're off and running. Hey, Mike, uh, 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 you're getting married next week. I am getting married next week. That's crazy. It's crazy to think about. When this episode airs, you're you're getting married a week from today that we're recording this episode. So, a week and a day, yeah. A week, to, okay, a week from tomorrow. Sorry, I keep thinking tomorrow's Saturday. But no, when you, when, you know. Oh, so when this episode airs, you will still be engaged. That's a... Uh, it's crazy, yeah. but yep, yep, yep. I uh, I was walking upstairs and telling my wife, "I'm like, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna go record an episode." What I don't know, if I, what do you want to hear me and Mike pontificate about for an hour? What do you, you know? What do you? And she said, "Well, he's getting married next week. Uh, how's how's he feeling? What's what's going through his head?" I literally would just go into my phone to find topics. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm. <laughs> The, I think everyone says it, and I'm not sure if we've talked about it in great detail, but everyone I know who's been married pretty much says, not like in a regretful way, but in a, mm. oh, like now that I'm older and wiser, I would have done it differently. Yeah. And I've, I've kind of a, gotten to that point. And it's not just me, <laughs> my lady also, where we're just kind of like, oh, if we had known like this was super stressful doing this, this, and this, we would have done something different. Sure. Well, that's funny. You know, my wife had said, I asked her, like, I don't know, what, what was going through your head the week before? And she said, honestly, kind of, like, overwhelmed. Not by, like, the mm-hmm. prospect of being married, but, the pro- but like, the event and everything that we're organizing, having to organize and, and coordinate. And not just a huge event, but also the huge life change. The, I don't know, are you guys, is she, is she keeping her name or is she taking your name? Or She's or- taking my name. Oh, wow. Okay. So yeah, my wife did too. And she's like, that's a whole thing of going through the process of changing your name and all that crap. And yeah. yeah. Well, for, for us, and this is where like I was, and I think this, our two relationships uh, contrast in a way because like, so you were with your girl for like a a year or two, if I recall, before you guys got married. Oh yeah. We just jumped right in. We didn't think about it. We were just fuck it. Yeah. And that's fine. (laughs) Uh, My, my, my sister, my brother-in-law proposed to her like nine months into the relationship. And they're still awesome. together. I forgot how many years it's been. Yeah. So, but the time being is like, I think with like a, a relationship like yours, or even if it's like three to four years, it's more exciting to where, Oh yeah. Okay. To where like me and my lady have been together for a decade. So paperwork aside, like we're fucking married. <laughs> you must've gotten together with her when you were like 16 then. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> um, no, but you know what I'm saying? So, like, when someone's like, are you excited? I'm like, not in a, in a negative way, but I'm like, no. Yeah. <laughs> um, because yeah. nothing changes. Like, there's no, yeah. it's just an expensive party now. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> um, well, you're like, your 10-year anniversary then or something. I don't know. <laughs> but that, you don't understand what I'm saying? Like, that's why, like, I'm just kind of. 100%. I'm kind of like, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a day where we sign the paper, but, like, we're. I'm not excited. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, I'm does, looking I'm looking forward to having a good time, but I'm not like excited. If that it makes does sense. take on it does take on a different meaning. And like 
each couple has their own different meaning for it, right? Like a marriage to one couple means something different to another. And they're in, and that's okay. We don't need to assume that it means the same for everyone, right? Sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, for, for some people that are raised super religious like I was, and it's like, oh, marriage means, like, like, let's get real. Marriage means now you can have sex, and that's awesome. <laughs> so that's why there's this big celebration. Like, bro, finally, you know? And <laughs> it's, yeah. And you get it. You get it. If you look at it through those lenses, you get the big celebration. You understand, like, yep, all right, cool. No, but, yeah, uh, I get it. Um, and I think that's, in, that's, that's the point contrasting with you is, like, in a relationship that would be, I guess you would say a regular relationship where you get proposed to and married within, like, three or four years. I see the excitement. But when you're when we've we've lived together for like four or five years now mm-hmm. so it's not like anything changes except now i'll have access to her bank account sure well, and i'm gonna clear that <laughs> shit out <laughs> it's funny it's usually the other way around but uh yeah. Yeah, no no it's okay well it's it, you could we could we could cut this and go back if this is too personal but then why why uh <laughs> you're saying that it's like doesn't seem like much of a change then why do you why are you getting married so I'm I'm one of the people who like I, I was I could be content staying with her for the rest of my life not married. Mm. I'm okay, content yeah. with that. Um, not not like I'm like fuck marriage like everyone can get married or no one like I'm not one of those people. But like I'm just kind of like no I'm like I'm content with where where we were at. But I know it was very important to her, yeah. and you know like just my family in general. They're like why don't you just propose? You've been there with her forever. Like and it was like all right like this is a step that is important to everyone. It'll finally show, like, okay, like, yeah, I'm committing to you, even though I already have. Like, yeah, we got a house together, yeah. we've done things, but, like, this is kind of like, it was just the the cherry on top of it. All right, boom, you're mine, bitch. You had time. You had time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, you've been together longer than a lot of, statistically, most marriages. You guys have been yeah. together Longer than most marriages. Think about that. That's fucking crazy. I can name a few. Yeah. I mean, not even personally. <laughs> I looked up because I had a someone that was thinking about getting married and I was trying to talk them out of it. And I had like, so I looked up all the <laughs> divorce statistics and I was like, um, yeah, like I found out most marriages split up, like most of them, like 80% of marriage, like of all the divorces end in the first eight years. Like it's like that. If sure. you make it past that mark. You're going to be fine. So I've I've heard the term, the seven year itch. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And, and you're right though. Cause, um, actually the transition to a topic I've put off for a while. Uh, I have a few friends, uh, they, they don't, they don't listen to the shit. So, um, I haven't talked <laughs> to them in a while, but I remember you know this is what they get for not supporting us. All right. We're going to, there you go. If we, them. if we know you're not listening, we're going to talk shit about you. Oh, um, that's a great idea. That's a new segment. <laughs> I'm going to write that down. Um, put out there in a post like, Hey, if you're not watching, we're going to talk shit. Uh, no, so these, <laughs> these people I knew, I met them doing a play about 10 years ago, actually. I, yeah. I just two, love like. Hey, ninety nine percent of America, we're gonna talk shit about you because you don't. If listen you don't to us. listen, we'll find you on Facebook and make fun of your profile photo. Um, uh, I'm sorry. Go on. You had some yeah, no, no. Um, and so they were together, I think, for about a year or two when the play began, and okay. um, and I remember like in the interactions because you've been like when you're in a cast, especially like a, a community theater cast, you go out to dinner together, you have drinks, you kind of become pals with everybody, you know, and so getting to know them. Um, I was kind of like, this is a dysfunctional couple. Like they don't, they, they don't <laughs> make sense. Like, and I, I would say to, cause like they kind of, everyone all kind of knew each other and I was the outsider coming in. And so like, I, I, every now and then I'd be like, Hey, like guys, am I crazy? Or like, do they not seem happy together, but they're together. Right. And a lot of people yeah. were like, yeah, they had that vibe, but like they, they love each other. And I was like, all right, whatever. Oh dear. And so a couple years passed and they got engaged and I was like, okay. Oh, okay. Okay, like, all right, you know what I'm saying? Like, all right, and sure enough, they get married, and um, oh, and like, so this is not who I thought you were talking about, but anyway, go ahead. Possibly, I don't know. No, so they get married. Um, I think like in March, February, or Marchish of the the year, and so then some time passes. I don't see these people a lot. Uh, January of the following year, I happen to glance by her profile on Facebook, and her name's back to her maiden name. Oh shit! And I was like the fuck and i kind of i kind of you know peruse her page and it says in a relationship with some uh, one else 
Oh, no. And I was like, what the fuck? And so I texted uh, a buddy of mine who's still kind of in that that friend group. And I was like, hey, man, like, gossip. What the fuck is this about? <laughs> and he's <laughs> like, yeah. Hold huh? on. Is it is it gossip? But I don't know. Marriage is a pretty public thing. And uh, That's you true. Know, there's, there's witnesses. There's a government form you fill out. So if, you know, something goes down, it's like, hey, I don't need gossip. What the fuck? What's going on? <laughs> yeah, I, I think I, I think I may have told this story before. Uh, now that's coming back to me. Um, so I, part, I apologize for repeating it, but we're talking about marriage. Is um, this true? This is true. This is a true story. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> but so, yeah. So my buddy, a couple of them, I text, they get that back back to me and they're like, yeah. So like they're, they were together, but I guess they rushed the engagement and the marriage because like her mom was sick. Okay. Um, I, I forgot the exact. It's one of those things like her mom was sick. So they like they fast tracked it so that she could get married or something. It was a gram or something. Does that make does that make sense? Sure. Yeah. 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 But yeah, like line or whatever. I don't yeah. Know. So, but they weren't like ready. A lot of people didn't think they were ready, obviously. Um, and so it was kind of like the dude, um, uh, the dude who she was with was like a coworker, like the new guy. Mm. was like a coworker of hers and so it was kind of like just overnight like I'm we're done I'm fucking this guy now and it was uh, like overnight done rebound and I was, uh, huh a rebound kind of thing yeah but they're still Maybe. together that, that oh, I have told oh, the story so I remember I said that they're still together and um and I remember just being it was so uncomfortable cuz like those two couples were like best friends with each other and I was like so does does old guy come around now and they're yeah. like, yeah, we still like they still invite them to shit, and it's really uncomfortable for everyone. Oh, weird. No, no. Anyway, talking about a marriage that I I, I would prefer to be in a ten year relationship and get married, knowing that this is yeah. solid, yeah. than rush a three year relationship into. It. And granted, everyone's different, but like that's what happened with them. Yeah, they rushed it to make ends meet, so to speak, with a family member, mm. and that shit didn't last. Yeah, well... I'm actually going to a wedding tomorrow that they're both going to be there. Oh, shit. <laughs> I'm not sh- I'm not sure what the dynamic... It's been a few years now, so I'm not sure what the dynamic is now, but... So, if anyone's listening, if anyone's listening, they can look up the dates and be like, wait a minute. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Um, so, it, uh, it, so when you get divorced, inevitably, what, do you have a co-worker you got your eye on, or, or what's the deal there? Oh, of course. I always have a... <laughs> <laughs> Plan B and Plan C and all that. Uh, it, it's kind of funny. Like uh, you play the games. Like, oh, if something were to happen, who would I I go after? And now I'm like, <laughs> all my employees are like ten years younger than me. Like, <laughs> yeah, it'd be it'd be it, weird. Right? It used yeah. to be different, but now I'd look like the fucking weird guy. Like, hey, I just got divorced. <laughs> Want to have a drink with me? You're 21, right? <laughs> well, if there's one thing millennials are, it's it's uh, industrious. We're all like the millennials are in their what thirties now, um, mid to late thirties. Yes. Yeah, I I I bet that they're all kind of going through their divorces right now. So if if millennials are faced with an issue of like, hey, there's a large you know percentage of us that are having trouble hooking up, we'll figure out a way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll figure something out. We figured out we figured out Tinder. I don't want to take credit for that, but I think Tinder was a very millennial thing. That's true. That was kind of like on the tail end of the millennial prime yeah so so you're 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 uh you're you're uh indifferent about <laughs> <laughs> about the wedding no like it, i was trying to explain to somebody when i say i'm not excited it's not like fuck this wedding it's not like that it's just kind of like it's coming i'm sure it'll be a fun time yeah just it's been stressful leading up to it and I've, like i said before i'm like is this all fucking worth it like what the fuck are we doing um <laughs> And, uh, but no, but like, it's going to be a good time. Like I'm looking, I'm looking forward to it, but I'm not like excited. Not in the way that most people, like when, when, when people get that, oh my God, yes, I'm so excited to start my life with this person and, uh, kick it off. It's like, no, nah, I've, I've already started my life with this person. We're, we're on our yeah. way. So yeah. So you know, it's, we're it's kind of, it's kind of like, um, I was talking to somebody today about it actually. Uh, and he had a, a chief sweater on and I was like. I was like, it'd be like this. I was like, this is completely unrealistic, but let's go with this analogy. Um, let's say some player managed to get on the Chiefs roster without ever signing a contract. He didn't sign yeah. shit. He still got yeah. paid. And he played for ten, five to ten years there successfully. And he was never under contract. 
And then after 10 years, someone was like, the GM was like, hey, man, like, we like you. Here, sign sign up for another 10 years. Like, yeah. would he be stoked that he's already been he, playing for you? Like, he'd probably be like, right. all right, cool, yeah. I'll sign up, yeah. <laughs> That's kind of how I feel. Like, it's not a bad thing. It's just kind of like, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah sweet. Let's, let's yeah, do it. Cool. Yeah. Let's re up. Let's re up this option. Yeah. Let's let's extend this so, contract before you get. So sick you're of me. you're anticipating at least ten years, and maybe a renewal at ten years or something. Renewing re, renewal the vowels the vow <laughs> vowels. the vowels the vows. Have you ever been to one of those? Have you ever been to a, a vowel renewal? I have not. I've been to one when I was a kid, and I remember being five. Like not five. I was like thirteen, maybe, at a vowel mm. renewal. And I remember thinking at 13, this is weird, right? Like, they're already married. But, no, I've seen a few people renewing vo- v- sh- vows. Shit. I'm, I can't talk about this. Renewing vows. Va- I'm going to stop. They're renewing their pledge. Yeah, which doesn't make sense because a vow, in my opinion, seems to be lifelong. Why would you... That, <laughs> you're, you're 100% right. So... <laughs> I, I was thinking that before you said it, like the, the renewing of the vows thing, I get the romance behind it, but like, yeah, do you, why do you need to re, to re, to, so to I renew them? Fa- I knew for a fact we've talked about this before because, uh, it happened less than a year ago. Some, uh, friends of mine renewed and I remember thinking this is dumb. And I went into the podcast thinking eh, my friends are renewed. like, what? Like they, they're not even been married that long. They made their vows. What were they like saying? Like I wasn't in the right frame of mind. Um, I so and so being of right frame of mind, you know, whatever do and no, but now in like ten years later, like no, I was fucked up. No, but now I'm serious. This time I'm serious. Or yeah, or what? The the only the only way I could see like I could be like oh, okay, they're renewing their vows. If like they maybe didn't get divorced, but like they publicly were separated and they're having issues, and, and maybe there's some yeah. trauma in the relationship. And it's sure. like you know what we're fi- we're fixing shit. Let's re let's renew this. That makes like, sense. All right, I see the symbolism, but yeah, if you're just renewing it for romance, like I get the romance, but you're kind of see. My it... parents did that shit. My parents did that shit. They were like almost divorced. Like my mom had like papers signed, and she was waiting for my dad to sign. This is when I was like five, and mm-hmm. they they were like everyone knew. Oh, this was happening. They got they stayed together. They didn't renew shit. They went out and carved their name on a tree and, and was done. And they're like, all right. And then they made my brother. And, you know, that's that's how I got my little brother. And, you know, that's that's it. Does your little brother know that's the story of his uh, conception? I keep telling him, but he, like, does not keep it. He, like, he just doesn't, like, you know. I'm like, dude, you know. You, you, I wouldn't either. <laughs> no, I wouldn't either. No, but, but it, you, re- you renew a rental contract. You don't renew a vow. I mean... Yeah, if you have like a a fuck buddy, <laughs> and you um, are we, are we re-upping for these next six months? And then and then you start dating someone seriously, and it doesn't work out. It's like, hey, let's renew this contract. Yeah, we're both single celebrate. again. Let's renew. Yeah, you go down to Vegas, you know, and and uh, you have your little renewal, and then you take everyone out to Chili's for your fuck buddy. Yeah, um, yeah, it, it, it it's it, kind of it's like I don't agree with the fuck buddy, but I do love Chili's. Okay. Everyone who says they don't like chilies is full of shit. Um, I love chilies. Chilies is great. Uh, yeah, it, and it's it's kind of shifting it, but kind of um, on the same tone. Like, I remember, like at some point, I was like in high school. I was like, "How strong is this pledge of allegiance that we've had to say it like three hundred times?" <laughs> like in school, I was like, <laughs> "Like, That's you know what I'm funny. saying?" Like that. I'm not. I'm not being anti-patriot. Uh, it's just kind of no, like. Yeah, no. ooh, I feel like we should say it once when we turn 18. Well, that's interesting. Okay, well, that might open up another conversation. Then. A whole other, another conversation. Open um, it. The, the, the Pledge of Allegiance, is there a difference between maintenance and a renewal? Mm. If you marry someone, do you just give up on most of the work or maintenance of a marriage? It's like, look, I said I do, right? You get half my shit go make me some dinner and I'll go make some money like for the next 50, 60 years. And then when we'll die, like whatever, no. Or do you maintain it? See, that's how I saw the pledge of allegiance growing up. It's like kind of like a remembrance kind of thing. Like, Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Remember I said this and remember this is like the process. It's something we maintain. Um, Or is so, so what's the difference there? Hmm. I think, I think it's kind of like purchasing versus renting. 
Oh, okay. Um, whereas with a marriage, you're, you're, you're purchasing it. And so you have it and it's there. And if you let it go to shit, then maybe it'll break. But as long as you maintain it, you're fine. But I don't think a renewal, it's like <laughs> purchasing it again. Um, with the Pledge of Allegiance, so that's where, like, and again, it's not anti-patriotic or anything, but, like, in my head, it's like, when I'm four years old saying this shit, do I even understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, it's the same for, well, not the same, but it's similar to religion. In the Christian faith, if you give yourself to the Lord, if you give your soul to the Lord and you're like, yep, you know, I'm a Christian, I've become born again. Excuse me. Yeah. I am forgiven. I am a Christian. Does that mean you're done like for the rest of your life? And that's whatever. What if it's like, I mean, I could just sin and ask for forgiveness and then I'm done and then I'm good. So is it well, done or is it, is there well, more to it? Well, no. So I think with religion, it is a little, it's, it's kind of like a marriage where like, let's say, but as a, as a kid, and that's where it's a different topic, but like as a kid going to church, it's one thing. But if like you understand maybe like right, you're 13, you understand the religion, you have a, a relationship with God, so to speak. Uh-huh. Yeah, so you so it's there, and then that's something that enrich. So now you're you're kind of this is gonna sound weird. You can like almost like be married to the God, God like in a sense where you've you've committed yourself to this religion, you've committed yourself to this the spirit, and so same thing with well, like I mean, well, not to not to I don't mean to interrupt you, but it's it's written in the Bible several times about the comparison between your relationship with God and your relationship to your spouse that's several sure. analogies made throughout the, the it's like you know love your yeah. wife like you know the god loves the church and shit like that so <laughs> yeah and so if anyway. you think about it in the religious to, uh, uh sense though like so yeah so you do technically commit to this this uh, religion this spirit this connection and then like a marriage like you, you just said you still have to maintain it and that's why you go to mm-hmm. church well that's like in a marriage that's why you go to dinner every now and then that's why you bring home flowers every now and then that's why you say nice things to each other it's the maintenance but you're ma- you still made a purchase <laughs> yeah but sometimes you got to wax the car man like- yeah no exactly um it, it, like if you bought a chevy and because you like chevys and you're trying to take care of that car, but some shit happens because it's a Chevy and the Chevy breaks down on you. You might go, you know what? I'm fucking done with the Chevy. And now you have to make a new purchase. <laughs> you don't like take it. You don't sell it and then repurchase it and then have a big party about how you repurchased your old car. Yeah, you don't. You don't. <laughs> when you when you pay off your mortgage, you won't just open a new one. <laughs> oh, man. I do, no, again, with the renewal thing, I understand the, the romantic concept behind it, but it is kind of silly. I always say, just just make a super awesome anniversary party and make it yeah. your thing. It's like, we're not doing it. Yeah. Anyway. No, but no, it's the, the comparison religion and, and marriage. Definitely. That kind of like, yeah, that initial step. I'm changing my life, but it doesn't just happen overnight. Like, you don't just change yeah. who you are and you still have that tendency to go back to your natural ways, but you're like, no, I've made this decision. I got to stick to this path. And and that's the religious thing is actually perfect. Uh, So, so think about kids going to church Um, from your experience, my my experience too. I feel like when you're a young kid going to church, you don't really understand what's being told to you. Um, So that's why I kind of said like, yeah, you kind of go through the motions. You don't really know, you know, you go to Sunday school and you're just like, okay, little stickers on a thing. Um, but then, like, it's not till you're probably like twelve or thirteen where you start understanding what's actually happening, and that's when, like you said, that flip goes on where it's like, okay, I'm committing myself to this. I understand this now. It's not just words in and out in one year and out the other. It's I'm actually understanding mm-hmm. what's being preached to me. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, a side note for that, I had a theory about that. It's a relig- It's mostly religious kind of theory, but it's when when I become a pastor and I ask you to delete all these episodes because I don't want to tarnish my history. <laughs> Um, this will be one of the analogies I talk about is that when you go to church, when you're a kid, your parents tell you, don't do this, don't do that. And you don't understand. You just go through the motions. I don't know why I'm not supposed to run out into the street. I don't know why I'm not supposed to touch the hot stove. Parents said not to do it. So there you go. Same with church. They go to church. You never really understood it. And then when you grow up, you're like, oh, okay. Now I understand it. Looking back, I understand it. You make the comparison to your relationship as an adult to God and God saying, do this, don't do that. I don't understand. I don't do that. But when we transcend, when we get to that age of maturity where we suddenly look back and are like, oh, that's why God said do this and don't do that and whatever. So it's like as a child, we think because we're adults, quote unquote, um, we have it all figured out. And we know now looking back like, oh, it's okay when we were children that we didn't understand stuff. 
but yeah. it's not okay that we don't understand stuff now so it must not make sense but i'm like hey maybe there's an adult adult someday <laughs> an adult adult but uh no, and i think there's anyway. a lot of comparisons there too because even like you could call the the childhood portion of faith kind of like you're you're dating around hmm Oh yeah, yeah. Because okay, like yeah. you, you don't really, you, you're not really doing anything much. You don't really even understand. Maybe these people, you're just kind of having a good time talking to people, seeing what's up. And then when you get to that point, like as a, I say, twelve, thirteen, when you start understanding the religion, that's kind of maybe when you're like, oh, I like this girl. Yeah. Maybe I should actually lock her down. Oh. And then yeah, as you okay. get, you just get older and you kind of mature into your faith. That's kind of the same thing as marriage. Oh, shit, I just pulled up this fucking cord. So here's a here's a meta question for you. We'll get Hit deeper. Me. Um apply that to a relationship you're in the dating scene mm -hmm. maybe there's stuff you're looking for but you don't know you're looking for as a young oh, perfect. man 100 percent. yeah yeah and then now that you're an adult you're looking back and like oh that's why i liked girls who did that because i'm a person who needs that kind of you know like oh sure that kind of thing um, oh sure i like I, yeah it was like one thing i was like growing up i was like why am i always like super attracted to uh, girls who are of quieter nature, girls who kind of like keep to themselves and kind of like aren't as uh, like, like majority of girls I was always like had crushes on were like the quieter ones that kind of whatever. That's because I realized that my, my parents were loud and psycho and most of my family were loud and I wanted refuge in a quieter, like more, not passive, but more peaceful kind of person. And it's yeah. like, you get to uh, you get to my late twenties, and I'm like, oh, that's why I was more interested in that is because that's where I found refuge and people that were like that, you know, away from my normal life, which is loud and chaotic. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I, le I learned um, when I was younger, my you know, high high teens, low twenties. Um, I tended to to, <laughs> to go towards girls and and pursue women who just had no interest in me. Um, oh. I'm not sure if that was my my refuge from my, my parents loving me, uh, but yeah. But once <laughs> once once I understood that, I actually I, I I gravitated towards one that that liked me, uh -huh. and it worked out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if I only knew, I should I should ask girls out who liked me. Yeah, I I would have been more successful. I saw a funny meme today. This segment's called Mitch's memes. They're not his. He just saw them and thought they were funny. Rather than share them, I'll say them on a podcast, and that's just as funny. Um, the meme was a tweet, and it said, uh, you know, how do I, I, there's this girl that I really like, but she's not interested in me. And the first comment was, date a girl that she absolutely hates for a month, and then you'll get with her. You know, call me at the wedding. <laughs> there's truth to that. There is truth to that. <laughs> uh, anyway. No, but uh, back to, like, okay, so we, we've established a bit of a, comparison between religion and marriage or relationships in general and much of the bible is written about that basing rel relationships on religion and vice versa but you mentioned the pledge of allegiance i thought oh that's kind of interesting what about nationalism what about where you align your loyalty to where you live is there some comparison there to religion or relationships what's the what's the thing there there's probably you could probably draw some um some similarities I thought you were going to ask more about the truck comparison because I think the truck comparison is actually <laughs> no. I, I think the truck. We'll get back to the the, the pledge of allegiance shit. The, um, the yeah, truck yeah, comparison because yeah. I, I, I after I said that I was thinking about it and sorry for hitting the mic. There, um, I remember no I had problem, a Mike. Uh, huh. I said no problem, Mike. Mike hit the mic. Yep, Mike hit the mic. Uh, dumb, I dumb, I had dumb. a a Saturn that this applies to, and I remember my dad when I was like fifteen, he bought me a car so that I could start driving it when I was sixteen. Uh, it was a blue Supra. And I remember, like, he kind of drove it into the ground. But, like, that was I – I really liked that car. And at <laughs> some point, there was just, like, I love this car, but is it worth holding on to? And so we ended up getting rid of it. And same thing with the Saturn. I really liked the Saturn. I bought it used. Mm -hmm. But um, there, just every other month, there was a problem with it, problem with it to where the transmission blew. And it would cost more to, and more to fix the transmission than it would to fucking get, get a new used car. And so it was one of those things like I was holding on to it. I was holding on to it, but it just kept going down, kept going down. And I was like, at some point, this is going to be too much until I <laughs> metaphorically broke up with it. Uh. I was like, I can't take this fucking thing anymore. I didn't fix it. I got a different car. <laughs> um, no, so there is a, 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 a comparison there. Yeah. Um, but going to the nationalism. No, the, to back back to the cars. Okay. Uh, <laughs> 
there was a, one of the well, radio hosts that I used to listen to a lot would often talk about male and women, sorry, male and female sexuality and how they're different. Um, and much pain coming from when you assume that everyone's sexuality is the same, you're going to have a lot of frustration down the road. But one thing he would talk about is the, comp- like women get really offended when guys look at other women, just kind of like walk down and look at, look at other women and then just like keep moving. Like there's no big deal. Like what I'm chopped liver over here or what? No, <laughs> he always compared it to your, let's say you're walking down the street and a 67 Corvette red, bright red Corvette convertible comes rolling down the street. You're going to look at it. You're like, damn, that's a nice car. All right. Now where was I going and continue walking and that kind of thing. And it's like, seriously that's how you look at women as like this thing that rolls down the street and he's like well yeah you're you're like wow that's something pretty that's something kind of cool to look at and then boom gone like it never happened and it's not like he's gonna go try to buy it it's it's not he's gonna steal it or like you know covet it and that's when you do get into a problem is when you start wanting it but yeah no i think that's a it's a fair comparison it's it's one that it's like hard to explain in my in my experience it's hard to explain to women because it makes us look fucked up and i'm like yeah well we're we're pretty fucked up (laughs) well so i will i will say um i I, there was a time where we were me and my lady were walking down for where we were and this chick was kind of walking towards us to walk by us and she had a pair of personalities on her um (laughs) and like and her shirt it was like a tank top a low-cut tank top to way that you 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 were even if you weren't looking at him, you were looking at him. And um, and so, yeah, like, I, I looked at him, and, you know, we're secure enough to where I was just like, Phew. and even my girl was like, God. but even, like, even my lady was like, God damn. It's just because it was like, I love it. I love how it. do you, I love it. how do you not, like, it's it's right there. Like, what? yeah, I can't, and so, like, no, so we're good. But even times where she'll be like, God, look at that fucking guy. I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah. I mean, okay. I was going to say, like, because I do the same. My, like, today, my wife put on an episode of Bachelor in Paradise. Now, to be ah, completely geez. fair, oh, fuck. To, be com- to be completely fair, she said, hey, can we watch some shit TV? And I'm like, babe, let's watch the next episode of Bachelor in Paradise because I want to know what's going to happen. So I'm hooked. She's yep. released of all, like, whatever. So I'm hooked now and, we're, and she's what? Well, we put it on. I'm still, I'm playing on my computer and, and we're watching it. And yeah, there's like these gorgeous people and I'm like, damn, dude, those dudes titties are hot. And she's like, yeah, I know. Yeah, it's uh, but, you know, so maintain the balance. You know, that guy's that guy's attractive. That girl's attractive. Yeah, That's don't a- <laughs> don't get me wrong. If, if the, the, the big titty bitch walking down the street, if I like turned around, I was like, hold on, stop. I want to keep looking <laughs> <laughs> like that. Then, then we might have a problem. Yeah. And then they then they got us all in trouble with the yoga pants. <laughs> but. Oh, the yoga pants, yes. Um, anyway, what were we, what no, were we talking about? We're cars. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah. So that was, like, I, I thought it was a fun comparison, the comparison of when guys turn their heads and look and, and are, like, visually stimulated, it sounds so weird, um, by a pretty girl. It's the same kind of wires that are firing when they see a really cool car. Or, sure. a, you know, some guys is when they see a really cool gun or, you know, a, a scenery or something. It's and, something pleasant to look at. So And you got, and you got to... Um, continuing to comparing women to cars no uh but it really is kind of like because even think about like my saturn i remember when i was like almost going to fix it the transmission but it was gonna cost a lot i remember my dad going like mike is this really worth it <laughs> and it really like and I, you've seen people in relationships where their friends were like yeah hey, man like is, Dude, is she really? worth it is this the one is this the really one? think do you really think a kid is gonna help i mean you need to get out of this dude like yeah um <laughs> And so, anyway. no, I think the car comparison is good. But I know you were you were talking about uh, the nationalist question. All right, yeah, 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 yeah. And I, <laughs> I mean, you could draw comparisons to anything. I'm not sure if. I guess you could draw the comparison. It's a well, nationalism, patriotism, all that has fascinated me. I, and it, because it it mostly started fascinating me when I got into college and realized that not everyone was the same as me which should happen to most people. But I'm like, wow, sure. not everyone is as patriotic as I am. That's it. Why am I patriotic? This is so weird. I was born here. I have no, like, and I could live anywhere. Why here? What is it? You know, what is, so ever since then, it's been kind of fascinating to me. Well, I mean, I mean, the whole relationship comparison aside, I will say there is, I think, a difference between like, so here, here, I've, I had this conversation with someone and this is kind of how we compared it to relationships, actually. True story. Um, 
so me and my lady, when we're out in public, like, yeah, I might give her a little kiss on the cheek or, you know, kiss on the, the head, like the side of the head or something when we're standing there. Generally speaking, like we don't really hold hands when we're walking. She might, you know, she might take my, my arm, but we don't really like, hold hands or anything, but like we're in love like, and we love each other and we're fine. Meanwhile, let's, let's talk about that couple I brought up earlier. Those two would be on each other uncomfortably all the time. I remember there was a party at, at my folks place. It was a cast party or some shit. And he, she literally was like, uh, you've been to that house, you know, like the kind of like the bricks that you can sit yeah. on. Yeah, he yeah. was literally sitting on the bricks and she was standing in front of him having a conversation with a couple of people. And he was just sitting there literally just like massaging her ass. Like it was weird. It was just fucking weird. And, and so it's like, yeah, you can have a healthy relationship without crazy PDA. And that's kind of, I think the difference between healthy patriotism yeah, well, and that ultra nationalist shit where you have to fly five flags from your truck. Well, crazy PDA is true for everything. I mean, you know, it's cool if you own a gun, but the guy who has the gun rack in his truck with the bumper stickers has said, I'll fucking shoot you for no reason or whatever they say, you know, is that the, yeah, the patriotism being a patriot is one and that, that'd be kind of a good comparison to how I feel like I am. It's like, yeah, I love my wife and I'm, I'd die for her. I'd kill for her and all that. And but I'm not, not going like, to hold her hand. On, <laughs> I'm not going to put it on my car. But if someone's talking to me, it's like, hey, do you really like your wife? I'll be like, oh, bro, let me tell you. Let me tell you. It's same with yeah. like my patriotism. It's like, yeah, I'm not going to put it on my truck. But it's like, hey, really? America? I'll be like, I mean, let me, let's me let talk. Let's talk about it. Let me tell you how much I, and why and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and, and there's, um, a lot of, there's a lot of uh, layers to that, too, because that's where my understanding, and I could be getting the definitions wrong, is that, uh, kind of the difference between patriotism and nationalism, to where patriotism, it's like, yeah, you love your country. You could acknowledge its faults, but still love it to death. Mm. Nationalism is kind of like I feel I feel like nationalism is more like we're America, fuck you. You don't like America, okay, fuck yeah. you. That's kind of that's the inter- that's my interesting because that brings up that brings up another like point. It's, it's a point we've touched on several times in this podcast is the importance of a definition of a word and just grouping them with whatever. Because sure. Like we talked about it with uh, the term of racism, when it's like the literal definition of racism is different than the word racist that people use a lot today. Um, Here's, I just Googled nationalism. (laughs) Noun, definition, identification with one's own nation and support for its interests, especially to the exclusion or Detriment. detriment of the interests of other nations. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah. But then similar words, patriotism, uh, nationality, xenophobia, shit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, okay. So yeah, that, that, that's not cool. <laughs> yeah. And, and, yeah. and that's, that's kind of where like, and like you said, I think a lot of people confuse those two words. Definitely. Yeah. Um, we're like, I also like, yeah, I'm a patriot. I love my country. Whereas a nationalist, like, for instance, a patriot would be like, our country has flaws. I love it, mm-hmm. but our country has flaws we need to fix. A nationalist would be like, our country is great. If you don't like it, get the fuck out. <laughs> and I think that's, that's more just, I think that's more just ignorant. I think nationalism would be like, um, our country is great. Um, the problems we have are because of all of them, of, because of Mexico and all their people coming over sure, the border. Sure, sure. You know, or, or, or russia and the war they're starting that's why we have problems you know it's not yeah, you know. and th- that's what i mean though it's like it's not it's not us we're good yeah it's these right, other things yeah okay yeah so okay then for conversation's sake let's establish that then what i was talking about was patriotism i probably shouldn't have used the term nationalism because that's not exactly what i mean so yeah okay no but patriotism that kind of yeah we're flawed hey my I, my wife i love her she's she's perfect for me she has flaws but you know i i still love her and you know i want to careful Mitch. My life to her and, yeah she might listen she careful listen. that's fun no and i, I think this, that's that's this week's segment of talking shit about people that don't listen to us my wife you know no i'm joking <laughs> mine next hold on let me get going no um no but next we, week it'll be you next week it'll be you because you'll be married next week that's true um I do think there could be something there um, because like same with the religion. When you grow up, you say the Pledge of Allegiance. I I want to go back and do the math about how many times we probably said the Pledge of Allegiance in our lives is through school. Um, And you probably say it not really understand, like I said earlier, not really understanding it, not having a respect for it, et cetera, et cetera. But when you're 18, 
suddenly those words mean make sense to you and they mean something and there's a definition behind them and you're kind of like okay like i know what this means now because you could if you're 18 and you you don't like the country you could very well be like i'm not saying this shit and then leave yeah um, well, a, a, i think a great comparison would be the lord's prayer our father who art in heaven hallowed be sure. thy name you know it's like that's something they say when they're born and you start saying it and then until finally you're 18 you're like hang on what do these words mean let me look at this and yeah, what yeah. am i even fucking saying yeah. It's like yeah, young yeah, yeah. young actors doing Shakespeare. <laughs> <laughs> How old were you when you found out that wherefore art thou Romeo meant why are you Romeo, not where are you Romeo? How old were you when you found that out? I think I was 19. Yeah, <laughs> same. I was like, yeah, 17, now, 18 years so old. <laughs> the first, this is a weird transition. The first Shakespeare play I did, I was um, senior year in high school. I was 18. and the, okay. But the director made it a point. She was like, you need to understand what these words mean. 100%. So like she had a, a day of rehearsal where she went to each one of us. Like when we started a scene, she'd be like, what are you saying? Don't, don't use Shakespeare's words. What are you saying? I love that. I love yeah, it. So, so I got used to it quick, but yeah, not, when I was 19, 19, 19 or 20, uh, we did Romeo and Juliet at the college. And that's just cause I never really read it. I, I knew the story, but like, you know, you don't really read it or give a shit. And that's when right, I realized yeah. it. Cause actually, reading it now i'm like oh okay that makes sense yeah yeah anyway but yeah side tangent. Yeah. sorry but well, yeah. shakespeare right no but, no i mean i think that's i think that's what's what's what can be very beautiful about it is when you get to that age of maturity 100 years ago it was 13 today it's about 30 a but curve. when you get when you get to that age where you're like okay what am i saying what do i believe and then you look back on the wherefore art thou romeo speech and you're like holy shit this is actually really good this is like you know and you read some of yeah. shakespeare like to be or not to be like you're like oh we've all said that haha ha, it's hamlet and then you get into it and you're like oh my god that is you're like, like oh my god <laughs> this is awful wow <laughs> it's awful though <laughs> like in a in, a, in the yeah, context yeah. you're like oh my god <laughs> oh my god he's debating killing himself like yeah and uh so same with uh, uh, the Lord's Prayer or the Pledge of Allegiance. Like, wow, okay, do I mean what I say here? Is in and it can be very beautiful, especially on 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 some things like that, like the Lord's Prayer or Pledge of Allegiance. Maybe I think that was kind of like last minute written. Even me, I'm like I'm pretty patriotic, but looking at the Pledge of Allegiance, I'm like, yeah, okay, you know. <laughs> you could apply the same concept to a ninety percent of lyrics from songs. True, very true. Very like the true. the classic. Have you heard of a uh, "Too Close" by Next? No, no. I'm not going to sing it, but uh, just because I'm not going to put anyone through that. But I don't know the, if I've ever heard you sing ever. Just by I've the been in a few musicals. Um. Anyway, huh. uh. So the song, as a ch as a person in middle school, the song is pretty much. It sounds like this guy is dancing with this girl in the club. And she's very sexy, and she's she's making it complicated for him. It's tough for him to, okay. to be there with her. Okay. <laughs> what the song's actually as, about? As we we've all been, we've all been there. We've all been, all been there. there, and yeah. Um, what the song's actually about <laughs> is uh, dancing with a girl and getting hard. <laughs> oh, I love it. Because there's a lyric in the song. It's like uh, I might forget it, but it's like we're dancing too close. Something something. You're making it hard for me. That's where I was like, oh, it's like it's getting complicated. Like he's having a tough time. And it's like, oh no, he's he's getting right. a boner. And there's other lyrics in it that like are like clearly when you get older, you're like, oh, oh shit, this dude's rubbing his dick against this chick on the dance floor. So uh, I think you're talking about. I think you're talking about the opposite side of of when you realize some of the shit you've been saying your whole life is not exactly what it means. Like when you find out that <laughs> what, ring, ar ring around the rosy is about the Black Death, or right, or when you when you watch Greece as an adult for the first time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're like, what? <laughs> and you're like, oh, Grease Lightning is about fucking chicks in this car. <laughs> <laughs> or that song, uh, I Think I'm Turning Japanese. Yeah. Have you heard that song? I Think I'm Turning Japanese. Yeah, it's about jerking off. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. There was I've one song. Picture. Yeah, it's fucking. Uh, <laughs> there was one song. Um, uh, I forgot the, the woman's name. Missy Elliott was, had like a verse on it. But it was, it was kind of a sexy R&B song. And like you, I remember I listened to it a couple years after it came out. And I was like, this song is literally about this woman masturbating to herself. What? I think, what's it called? 
I think it's called Oops. Oh, I think it's called Oops. Oh, dear. Because there's yeah, a lyric so in it where she's are... like, I looked over to the left, a reflection of myself. And I was like, because oh. she's talking about like having sex and how she looked in the mirror and it was just herself. Oh. And I oh. think through the the, okay. the, sec, the cool beats, you kind of missed that. <laughs> <laughs> They've been tricking us with that shit for years, man. Oh, no. Remember what's the... Go on. Remember that song, Pumped Up Kicks? Yes. That did not age well, that song. Yes. <laughs> yes. <Do> you... <laughs> I, I love the song. It's um, Nate Dogg. I think Snoop's on it. Um, it ain't no fun. The homies can't have none. Anytime that song comes on, bitches go crazy. And it's literally about a guy sharing his girl with all of his friends. Oh, oh! But everyone goes nuts when it comes on. I'm like, is anyone really listening? <laughs> yeah, no, well, yeah. I mean, we get into the long list of that shit. Like, uh, like, like when well, Chappelle had his whole bit about when Skeet Skeet came out with, yeah. by Lil John, <laughs> yes. and he's like, wait till wait till white people find out what that means. Like, my God, what have we done? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, the Lord's Prayer. Um. <laughs> <laughs> that is a perfect transition to yeah. It's all the no, same. Yeah. It's all the same. Um. No, it was a great moment when when Jesus talked about the Lord's Prayer. It was kind of like, look, calm down. You don't need to say all this like this this overly you know celebrate ceremonial crap. Here's all you need to say. And then he said the Lord's Prayer, and it somehow became like the standard the thing, that everyone yeah. says all the time. And I'm, especially with know, Catholics, big time. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Granted, it is if you look at it. See, I tend to look at things how I think the Bible should be looked at, which is both literally and metaphorically. Which is okay. kind of like you have to kind of balance between the both. And it's like, okay, say the Lord's Prayer. But also, say the Lord's Prayer metaphorically. The first the first thing is, um, our Father who art in heaven. Okay, the first acknowledgement is, hey, there's a God and he's in heaven and he created everything. So both literally and metaphorically, you can go different ways with it. But anyway, same as a Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag. That means the flag is God? I don't know. I think we need to rewrite the Pledge of Allegiance. I think so, too. I think so, too. Because, like I said, I think it was rushed. <laughs> kind of. We have a country. We have to... Oh, shit. We yeah. have to make we got, it. We, have... we, need, we need the Pledge of Allegiance due tomorrow. And uh... <laughs> um, Same with the National Anthem. I'll, I'll, I'll like, like, I, you know, everyone's going to give me shit, but I do not like our National Anthem. It makes no sense. It's a... It's a battle time lyric written to a different song's tune. It makes no sense. Like, what? yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what I know. A lot of these 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 hyper nationalists get mad when they yeah. talk about the um, the national anthem. But you you you're right though, because like it's kind of like if if what if I the the, the one thing I I moralized about my relationship with my woman, the one thing I bring up every day, is the time that we like yelled at each other. Mm. Or the the time that I got into a bar fight mm. because someone hit on her, so I knocked this guy out, and I keep bringing that up. Like it really is. And I'm not sure if that makes sense, but like, yeah, you're talking about like a, it's like a battle. Yeah, yeah, it, it's not. It's just yeah. I don't know. So the the song, what is it? Um, our country, tis of thee, sweet land of liberty. The mm-hmm. <clears throat> I don't know what the song's called, but that one. Um, I know what it's called. I just forgot at the moment. You commentators that aren't listening. Um. <laughs> That song, I like said the lyrics out loud once to my wife because she's like, "What's the lyrics of the lyrics?" And I like said the whole song out, and and she and I both were like, "That's actually a great song. That's actually pretty good. It's kind of like O Canada, you know. It's like a good anthem, and it's like sure. So like, let's establish. Oh say, can you see? It's our anthem. It's our anthem, and therefore I must respect it because it is our anthem. I'm not. I'm not. Uh. Uh. Down talking the concept of an anthem i do think they're pretty cool i just don't like that song for our anthem it's, it's sure. a dumb song and i think i think when people get uh those, those hyper nationalists get really defensive just because it's the national anthem but th- there's nothing wrong with saying like eh, i could probably use a little tune-up because yeah. you know, even even i'm not even saying that it should because i know a couple years ago people were talking about replacing it with um i got the name of the song um but the song don't was stop. don't don't stop believing don't stop believing. I support that. Um, no, but I forgot what song it was. And a lot of people were just like, no, that song, it's just like a black song about slavery. No, blah, blah, blah. And then I actually listened to it. And it was actually a very beautiful song about like overcoming horrible shit. Yeah. 
And it's like, wh- what better way to describe America? I mean, overcoming horrible shit. Yeah. Uh, from the from yeah. the get-go, the Civil War, uh, you know, the Civil Rights Movement. Like, there's a lot of shit we've, we've overcome. Like, that's actually a great message. Um, co- America has constantly been at war with itself since yeah. its inception. That's a distinctly American thing. And... So I, I, I kind of don't like it when people are like, oh my God, America's changing and we're at turmoil. This is so terrible. I'm like, I don't know. We've been at war with ourselves forever. That's really kinda, nothing new. Yeah. It's kind of how we evolve and become better with each step. I mean, in my opinion, we get better with each step. So yeah, I mean, but back to the, <coughs> excuse me, the debate is not whether or not the anthem, because a lot of happened when, when the Kaepernick uh, taking a knee thing was going yeah. on. Um, a lot of the debate, unfortunately, was centered around one side, the right side, the loud right side saying the anthem is perfect. You do not tarnish it, whatever. And a lot of the ignorant left side saying, well, it's a stupid song anyway. We need to change it. And it's like we're talking about two different things here. Um, well, that's what happens a lot. I realize is that um, when things become polarized. You have two yeah. sides yelling at each other, and we can we could get into like who's right, who's wrong. That's not what we're talking about. But they're yelling at each other different things. They're yes, almost straw manning each other. Um, yeah. To where you, you just sit on the head like this is a perfect song. You're unpatriotic if you take a knee to it, whatever. And the left, instead of arguing that point, at least the loud the loud left, right. they they make a completely different issue instead of responding to that and, and right, vice versa. Yeah. Well, Bill Burr had a great one of his specials. He talked about it where he's like, uh, you know, the the people that get super offended by Kaepernick taking a knee. It's like, how dare you ever tarnish it? My brother-in-law was a fireman. He walked nine eleven. He watched nine eleven on television from Chicago. Don't touch them yet. You know, and it's like that's not at all what we're talking about. And if we stayed on point, we might have made more progress. But you well, know, that's what. <laughs> it's, and and we're we're just talking about shit that people mostly probably already know. But that's one thing that. A story during the whole Kaepernick issue or era, if you will, that whole time period that gets overlooked a lot. Um, we call it we call it the Nike era. <laughs> the Nike era. There you go. No. <laughs> no. So when when Kaepernick first started, because I know I I actually made a change in my opinion about the whole situation when he was just sitting on the bench during the national yeah. anthem. Even I was kind, of, and I'm pretty relaxed with my patriotism, but even I was kind of like, bro, really? That's what you're yeah. doing. That's what you're doing. And then it. He the story I heard was he met with a uh, former veteran. Oh yeah, a former you, veteran. You course. talked about you talked about this in a previous yeah. episode about the the real conversation they had, right? Yeah, and they had they had a conversation in the vet, and they they kind of told each other why they both were disappointed in each other or whatever the thing. And when they came to terms with each other and understood each other, the veteran said, "Hey, check it out. Like a lot of people take a knee when they when someone gets hurt or when they're mourning. How about you still want to protest? How about you take a knee if you think the nation's maybe wounded?" And Kaepernick took that to heart. And he started doing mm-hmm. it. And I was like, mm-hmm. okay, like, so it's a step of good faith because two people yeah. actually had a conversation that was meaningful instead of which, just yelling oh jibber jabber over each other. Yeah. Which, oh my God, could actually do some real change. Yeah. Rather than just yelling about the, not even to the person, but about the person to someone else. That's what we see yeah. most of today. That person, Mike, that Mike over there. He's a dick, and this is why. Let me tell this other person, not actually talking to you, and say like, "Hey, yeah. what do you think, really? Why? Why do you think that? And uh, how am I wrong here?" Like, <laughs> but yeah, and let's let's transition because actually, I had this topic for last week, and Danny and I were supposed to record, and we just we got too drunk. Um, nice. <laughs> that's that's pretty much the long and short of it. I was hanging out with my uh, British relatives; they were visiting North Carolina. No, that's right. Yeah, there no, I went to yeah, we were, them, uh, last year. Yeah. I went to England, that's right. Uh, we were we were going to this like haunted soiree thing for Halloween on Saturday, and we were going to record oh, before. Awesome. Yeah, we were going to go beforehand. We were going to record, but then they got here a little. They got him and his girl got to our place a little late, so we didn't have time. Then we were like, oh, we're, we'll just record after. And by that point, oh, we yeah. were it, it wasn't happening. And then like the next Not morning, out. we'll do it. And the next morning, we're just like, no, fuck this. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so I had this down, and then since then, right, yeah. there's another example. Excuse me, on the other side of the aisle. And I don't like either one of these bitches, so I'm, I'm cool with talking about it. The week before, uh-huh. Marjorie Taylor Greene, who I dislike oh, yeah. very strongly, got swatted again. I guess she's been swatted multiple times. Uh, swatted, for the people who don't know, is that you pretty much call the police and say there's an emergency at this location. Send everyone you got, hoping that a SWAT team will break in and fuck their life up. Apparently, this has happened to Marjorie Taylor Greene multiple times. 
not liking her at all, I think that's the dumbest shit you could possibly do. Because, <laughs> yeah. like... So one, wait, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm like, I'm still unclear on it. Like, so someone called it on her and she Yeah, so, got so hypothetically, I don't, I don't know your address right now, but like a lot of okay. streamers used to do this um, to each other in the gaming community when like they would stream live with like their little okay. fucking screen on the top. And so people, if they knew where they lived, like they would hack to get the IP, whatever, would call the cops in their area and say, hey, um, Mitch at this address is being assaulted right now. Home invasion. He needs help immediately. So that the police okay. department would send like the SWAT team. And then to the gamers who are on the stream watching, they would see this, this streamer go, who the fuck's at my door? And like, oh, interesting. when police okay. enter, it was kind of a thing. So people wow. were doing, even though Marjorie Taylor Greene doesn't stream like that, people were doing that to her so that the, the cops go to her house. Wow. And apparently okay. it's happened. I didn't hear about that. Well, this That's time amazing. I don't think it was like a violent break in, but like the cops showed up like, is everything okay? And some shit. I, I don't know yeah. the whole story, but I know she got swatted again. And this in my head is like, one, I don't like this woman, but she is a person and that's fucking rude. Two, now you're giving someone who you don't like fuel to now she's saying, see, this is what the left is all about. They're trying to harm me. They're trying to do this, blah, 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 blah. On the yeah. flip side, this last weekend, fucking crazy dude went to Pelosi's house. And again, yeah, if you know me, about Pel Pelosi's not my bitch. I do not like that woman. <laughs> but so dude goes into the house and I guess the story is, Pelosi was in Washington, but her husband was there. The guy got violent with her husband, and he had once the cops came and arrested him, he admitted that his plan was to to question Nancy, and then if she lied to him, or if she, he felt she lied to him, he was going to break her knees so that when she went back to Washington, she'd be in a wheelchair and send a message. Same thing. If you are on the fucking right, and you're trying to make a point that like we're the good guys, this yeah. motherfucker just put a whole... Yeah. <laughs> the little delay to that. Um I forgot where I was going with this, but uh we transitioned to to toxic people and how they're making shit worse. Yeah. It was uh it was uh Yeah. There's there's constant as evidence of that kind of stuff. And everyone's like, God damn it, please don't be a please don't be a a, a, a like minded <laughs> individual. Yeah, and so <laughs> go on, sorry. I no, like every time, every time there's a tragedy, everyone's like, "Please, please let them be from the other political persuasion, so that way we have some fodder." You know, kind of. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's the thing. Like, so with the with Marjorie Taylor Greene, she's already made claims that the left is trying to literally kill the right. They're literally trying to. They're on. They're out in these streets trying to kill right wing people. So what if the, her, the people who follow her, like the, the the crazy ones, what if that SWAT did get her killed? Or hurt. Mm. So she's made this fucking crazy claim. And by this yeah. kid trying to fuck with her, I'm assuming it's like a kid or something, gets her hurt. Yeah. Now people who believe her shit are like, see? Yeah, then, I mean, yeah. And then I flip mean, it on was, Pelosi, it's the same shit. It's, I don't know. It's not that new, in my opinion, because Trump tried this during 2016, where he's like, look, it's all rigged. If I lose, it's because it's rigged. It's that kind of people start making up these crazy ideas. I forget the term for it, but it's not new in my opinion. It's not. I think we've seen el the, elements of it all. I don't think the concept is new, but the real thing's happening. Like I was going to say that the Pelosi thing, when you have mm. a lot of left-wing people saying like all Trump supporters are violent, they'll hurt you January 6th. Mm -hmm. Remember that shit? And then you have a Trump supporter breaking in to her house yeah. and attacking her husband. It's like, now right. left wing people are like, see, yeah, see. Well, like and, uh, Alex Alex Jones to bring up a great beacon of virtue in our society. oh the philosopher, um, um, Alex Jones, who will say, you know, there's a conspiracy to shut me down and take all my money and make me silent, and then he says some crazy shit, and then the families of the crazy shit he said about sue him, and then he goes, see, see, they're shutting me down. Just it's almost like, like you know, self fulfilling I'm prophecy, asking. yeah. Exactly. Exactly. That might be what I'm talking about. The self-fulfilling prophecy. I think that uh, applies to certain situations. Um, but yeah, I forgot why I tangent to that, but I had it in my notes about Marjorie Taylor Greene that even though I despise that woman, like that that's shit's not just cool. it's not okay. And yeah, and I, I don't know what else to say about it. It's just kind of like yeah, you're you're making it worse. Right. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping people see the patterns. Whether like they watch the news. 
from whatever political, whatever news you watch that say, oh yeah, well that gunman that was arrested outside of, um, seven, Senator, uh, uh, justice Kavanaugh's house last month. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, that's because the lefts are psycho and they want to shoot all these people or whatever. I, I'm hoping people watch that and think, no, I think this was a, a psycho. And I think the news is harping on it too much and yeah. trying to make it a bigger thing than it is. Like people say, oh, this dude with the hammer in his underwear that was trying to kill Nancy Pelosi. I think that was just a psycho in his underwear with a hammer. Well, he wasn't in his underwear. Right. Her husband was in his underwear. Okay. Still a oh, psycho. Okay. Still a fucking okay. psycho. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then, yeah, it's still a guy with a hammer who showed up at a political leader's house. Yeah. And it's like, I th- I'm hoping that America, could be, well, that's putting a lot of so, faith in humanity. Well, we, we've said it before. Um, we're not the only ones that, like, I feel like the majority of people would be like, oh, well, well that's a fucking crazy person. That shouldn't happen. But then right, yeah. we, I, I started calling me, now we call him the loud right, the loud left, have their big fucking major opinions about it. You have left-wingers now saying, see, all Trump supporters are fucking nuts. This is a real-life thing, blah, blah, blah. And you have crazy white, white, Jesus, right-wingers making up conspiracy theories about it now. Um, I guess Freud was right. (laughs) The left and the white. Um, (laughs) The left and the white. (laughs) um, We have an episode name. No, don't name it that. That's true. Yeah, but (laughs) we'll see. Um, And uh, yeah, and I think a lot of it, the guy I listen to on YouTube, um, he talks about a lot how there's a lack of, um, I think he calls it media literacy and just philosophy and critical thinking in schools and shit. So by the time you get, Mm -hmm. you graduate, yeah, you might know who the president was in 1957 and you might know that Columbus sailed here in 1492, but like you don't know how to read a paragraph of the news and analyze it um, rationally and and intelligently. Oh, 100%. Yeah. And that's, I remember when I was sorry, listening to this guy a couple of years ago, he, he's, he's definitely a leftist, uh, but I like listening to him because he breaks things down very logically. I don't always agree with him, but I like, what was, he, what was it? Who is it? Um, David Pakman. He's, I'm he's, give him a listen. Yeah. He's unapologetically leftist. So just know that going into it, but the way he breaks things down are, is actually very logical, very um, pragmatic. He gets a little bit hyperbolic at times. And, and sometimes I don't agree with his logic, but I enjoy listening to him because he at least breaks it down intelligently. Get all um, the sources in, man. I mean, one of my yeah. favorite podcasts is Dan Harmon, and he's as left as it gets, and he doesn't believe in hierarchy, and he believes in a utopian society. I'm like, dude, you get paid millions of dollars to make shit up. You yeah, shut the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, anyway, no, no, no. But I still listen to him. I think, like, okay, yeah. that's an interesting point. I don't agree with it, but it's an interesting one. No, yeah, and, that, I, and that's why I enjoy it. But he's made the point several times that there is a lack of, no matter what your political ideology, by the time you graduate, like, philosophy oh, yeah. critical thinking media literacy yes. all that shouldn't be college classes those should be core yes. classes in high school maybe yes. even middle school because we're seeing the effect of when that's not in a society you have an entire mm-hmm. generation now of people watching the news and just believing everything they see N- yep. not one side or the other they just believe exactly what they see and it's it's mind-boggling 100 percent. yeah his his thing and i agree with it completely there should be like your cores english math science, history, philosophy. Right. And under philosophy yeah. is where you get your critical thinking, your media literacy, all that shit. So you're taught it. Mm-hmm. Just not yeah. necessarily what's right and what's wrong, which how do you how do you approach something and how do you analyze it? Yeah. My answer to that was grab a bunch of books and run off into the woods for a week and decide what I believe. And it's different for everybody, right. but you should know how to find those values. 100%. And 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 a benefit is we're creating jobs. You probably have thousands, if not millions, of people with philosophy degrees who aren't doing shit right now because they got philosophy degrees. They yeah. could be teaching yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> that's what's so funny. Like, so I'm in, I'm, uh, you know, starting at my new job. I think I'm going into my fourth week now at, at Sounds my about new right. job. Yeah. And uh, been so my job is I like get assigned to certain jobs that are all over the state. And so far, I've been meeting all kinds of other guys that work for this company as well. Like, we're, like, co-working on this. So they can kind of show me the ropes. This is how we do this. This is how we do that and whatever. So I've met a cast of characters, let me tell you. And they cracked me up because it was talking. we were talking about that uh, you might not, like most of America, you may not affiliate yourself with one side or the other. You might be like the 80% of America that find themselves somewhere in the middle and, and just kind of vote based on the person. 
everyone I've met here, everyone, they all talk the same, but they all have different values. It's really interesting. It's like that <laughs> motherfucker, that Ted Bud, he's corrupt as shit, and I ain't voting for that guy. Never did. It's so awesome. I love it. I love it because I was expecting just the ultra right all the way. And I'm pleasantly surprised by a bunch of critical thinking, awesome people. It's pretty awesome. Good. But, That's awesome. Um, it's, it's hard to come by. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to come by. And I hate the, okay. We were talking about the, uh, the, 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 the ignorant PDA people mm-hmm. absolutely applies to people's professions too. You can't tell me you've no, no, a union electrical. I knew you were going there. I knew you were the going back there. of the fucking truck. <laughs> I knew that was the next words out of your mouth. So like, you know, sometimes the union, you know, sometimes the workers will be like, yeah, man, you know, dirty hands, clean money and blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah, military, man, we're the best. And any other job isn't a job unless you're whatever. whatever. No. Okay. So that's, (laughs) so acknowledging that I acknowledge that there is a kind of critical thinking that applies to someone who's worked on machines their whole life. (laughs) Okay. <laughs> the kind of, you know, I hate to be like the blue collar, bleeding heart, whatever guy, but there's a certain kind of character that seems to be related to all the people I've met so far. It's that common thing of all the people of they've worked with their hands and critical thought, try to tr- critical thinking, trying to figure out problems of machines and electrical and mechanical and all this stuff that fosters a certain kind of critical thinking where they're kind of like, you know, I don't think I believe everything the news tells me. I'm going to start thinking for myself because uh, this doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I love it. I love it. It's a very interesting community. Good. <laughs> Good. Well, yeah, no. Um... Sometime, and sometimes I drink a lot and say some racist shit, but that's fine. It's fine. But... <laughs> it's their first no, I right. <laughs> they I... hate white people out here, man. <laughs> I'm always curious. Um, this applies mainly to white people. um i have some examples but i'll just be generic about it um when like a person that you you might know him kind of well but maybe not too well will just say some blatantly racist shit and just casually do it (laughs) and i've I've always so So i have a i have a great comparison for this but i'll let you finish your thought because i remember in college this is when obama and mccain were running against each other uh, okay. This guy, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it. I may have told this story before. This is a true story. Um, gonna say it. Uh, I may have said this before though. But uh, he, we were walking don't, together. Um, don't it wasn't, lie to me. I would never lie. I was walking back to the dorm, and he was kind of he lived on the floor, and we were just chatting. And he's like, "Who are you gonna vote for, Obama or McCain?" And I was like, "Yeah, you know what? I kind of like them both. I really don't know." And he's like, "Okay, yeah, I feel that." I was like, "What about you? Who do you think?" And he's like, "You know, I don't know how I feel about McCain, but I just..." Yeah, I don't really know how I feel about having a black guy as the president. And I remember, I remember stopping, and I was like, "I don't even know you that well." And and, and so I was kind of like, "Yeah, that that doesn't matter to me really. That doesn't really matter to me." And immediately he's like, "Yeah, yeah, you know, it doesn't really matter to me either." Just but and I, in my head, I was like, <laughs> and I'm, I felt like it was almost like a floater, like, "Hey, are you yeah. are you with me? Are you on my team?" Because if I would have said, because I, I, I guarantee you, if I would have said something like, "Yeah, I feel that," I don't know how I, I would feel about a black guy either being president. He'd probably be like, "Right now, let me tell you something." And one hundred percent. I feel like it was a it's floater. Like, like, are you? He's so, dipping his toe in. Are you? I was me? talking about. I was talking about this concept today when we were watching fucking Bachelor in Paradise. We were well, like watching these people like kind of talking like this couple, this new couple that's like guy and a girl, and I like remembering the dating scene. Of like, okay, when you're talking with someone and you're getting along and you do the, you, you establish, not establish, but you test the bounds yes. as far as physical touch goes. Yes. It's like, I'm going to brush my hand on her shoulder. Oh, she reciprocated. Oh, cool. Okay. I'm going to put my hand on her knee. Okay. She liked that. Oh, and she did the same for me. Cool. Okay. You kind of test the waters back and yes. forth. If I, I don't just walk up to a first date and grab her titty. It's like, no, <laughs> like, no, like, whether I agree or not, not that way, bro. Like, rookie mistake. Rookie mistake. <laughs> rookie mistake. <laughs> We've all been there. Just, uh, oh man, a black guy is president. Like you don't that, lead with that. Like. Yeah, and, and there's been some other times where I'm just like, where I'll hear shit like someone will say it to me that I don't know that well, and I'm like, look, I'm like, yeah, do you, uh, what? Like, ask me some questions first. first. Yeah. <laughs> so okay, then what would be the proper way to bring that up? What would be <laughs> I, don't, a nice... I don't know, or at least Let's get a say, feel for me. 
but hypothetically, yeah. hypothetically, uh, uh, you and I are both just racist. Hypothetically, <laughs> we're racist, and we just do not want a a, a, a person of color in the White House. Who <laughs> would be a lead-in question for that? <laughs> so, <laughs> a lot of people I know that are that are clearly racist. <laughs> um, they don't think they are. Oh, interesting. Because okay, like yeah. racist is a bad word. So I'm not racist. Right, right, right. right. I'm not yeah, racist. Just that, you know, yeah. just some of these black people. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I've literally heard. Yeah. Like I'm not racist. I'm just saying there's a lot of Mexicans who, oh. who who take the white man's job. That's all I'm saying. I'm not racist. Like there, there. That's a mentality. No. I've heard it. No. Oh, um, man. Because oh, racist man. is bad. Racist yeah. is bad. Look at Kanye. <laughs> Kanye has said some gnarly shit about Jews, but he says, I'm not it. anti-Semitic. We're an hour and 10 minutes in. Yeah. I'm and we've not school. even mentioned Kanye once. Okay. We were off for a week, guys. No, but, yeah, but, yeah, but, we, got, but, we got a lot of stuff. My, that, what I'm talking about applies to him because anti-Semitic is a bad word. In an interview, he said, I'm not anti-Semitic. Yeah. Uh, Semitic. Right. Anti-Semitic. Like, that's not me. I'm just pointing out that the Jews are the problem. Um, <laughs> Shit. So it's like, if the word is a bad word, I'm not that thing. Yeah. I'm, I'm well, just pointing out. Yeah. 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 That gets into a whole other... Uh, yeah, that, that's, a, that's an interesting concept. The, the, no, it's the, the power of the butt. I'm not racist, the, but... No, it's the, it's the... I can't possibly be bad, so my thoughts can't be bad. I'm not bad. I know that's I'm not bad. That's a perfect way to put it, yeah. So my opinions aren't bad. It's like, no, that's not, it's not the way it works. It's like, not the way it works. What, what did you just say? I have a problem with a black person being the president. What's the definition so, of racism? Exactly. Exactly. Racial prejudice based, like prejudice based on race. So right. what you just said. <laughs> is racist. And we have a society has decided that that is bad. Ergo, Latin, you are bad. But, you, who are racist? Like, but no, I'm not racist though. I'm just uncomfortable with black people in power. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah. Well, the left and the white. That's fun. The left and the white. <laughs> that might be the title. No, might get no, might get no, us some views. I think we should save it for a good one because we could talk about the demographics of political parties and get into yeah, that because that would be a, you know, because if we labeled this episode the left and the white, it'd be misleading because we didn't talk about that at all. But. <laughs> yeah, it was just a fucking slip up. I, I don't know how to pronounce <laughs> my R's funny. apparently. Well, I was trying, I wrestled for an hour about my uh, renewing our vows, That's renewing true. the vowels. Why did I think there was an L in any words, in man? Words anywhere. are tough sometimes. Uh, yeah. So yeah, how about next week? Uh, to those of you listening, next week maybe we'll talk about the midterms and the results. Assuming we record week, an episode before, I'm gonna say we might be off because you're getting fucking married, man. Maybe we could record before, maybe after. That'd be that'd be that'd be fun. Maybe um, at. Um, so yeah, I'm. <laughs> the wedding's on a Saturday. I'm flying out of North Carolina on Friday, getting there late Friday night. Going to the wedding and then flying out Sunday morning. Like, oh, you're doing a quick turnaround. That's, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be fun. Gonna I've be done fun. that. I've done that. Yeah, uh, I think that lets us wrap that up. Yeah, I don't even hey, know if I we intro correctly, but hey, <laughs> I, you know what? I loved our intro. Wherever we started recording, right. I loved it. I don't remember it, but I love it. All right, let's but, go out like the way we came in. <laughs>